Hey everybody. Yeah, I'm back. So, it seems after my year of being away from the channel, we've finally gotten some more news on Sonic Frontiers. Obviously, if you've seen the thumbnail, you know why I'm talking about this. Sonic Frontiers has me scared. Scared of what it is currently, scared of what it will become, and scared for the Sonic series as a whole. Many have the same opinion I do, and the real problem is, I don't know what Sonic Team can do to make any of this any better. The gameplay shown is obviously in early development, with the game still having half a year or so left in the oven, but for an early build, this game feels almost soulless, like its predecessor. The fact that Sonic Team took the same physics and animations from Forces and applied them to this game is really irking me in the wrong direction. Modern Sonic from Forces was designed to move in a straight direction at all times and with little to no turning ability, because that's just the kind of game Forces was. An open world game should allow for so many movement options that can show Sonic's acrobatic ability and purely stylized movement. The way Sonic moves in this gameplay teaser is extremely linear, similar to Forces, which is probably the most linear game in the franchise. It's almost like Sonic Team didn't even consider any alternative, they just chose to reuse everything from Forces. And if Redemption of Forces control was the main idea, I don't think an open world game is the way to redeem a horribly linear control scheme. This gameplay choice wouldn't bug me as much if there were less automated sections. Part of the charm when it comes to open world games is the fact that you yourself are controlling the character in this expansive world. You can choose where you want to go at any time, and you can get there by any means. The automated sections in Sonic Frontiers seem to be exactly the opposite, by taking away your ability to choose and just doing the action for you. The boost is also retained from forces, and as weird as it may sound, the boost is the most interesting movement ability so far. It has no aura anymore, so all the flair of boosting from past games is basically gone, and it acts like a move faster button now. Lastly, a trick system was shown off, but without any of the style Sonic is known for. Hey guys, I'm in the editing process of this video right now, and I just watched the second livestream they came out with, which was the gameplay showing off the combat of the game. And honestly, the combat doesn't really change anything about my argument. It's heavily combo-based, and some of the moves look super stylized, which is cool. And there's some animations that, you know, get Sonic's personality right and all that, but... It doesn't really add anything to my argument, I just wanted to say that they revealed some of the combat stuff, and it's cool for what it is. I don't know. But yeah, uh, thanks guys, enjoy the rest of the video. Trust me, I get that games can have very scaled down early builds because of so many limitations, and I also understand that gameplay is only half the package when it comes to making enjoyable games. But another problem lies with it. Why else should I be excited for Sonic Frontiers as of right now? The story of the game is still under wraps, and I have no reason to look forward to it because of the last few Sonic stories. I know new writers were hired, and graphics will probably look astonishing in cutscenes. But that doesn't make me think the story crafted for this game will be any better than the past few stories. Every game from the 2010s has disappointed me with the direction they've chose to go in. Many fans thought Sonic Forces was going to have the Sonic series go darker again, and then it turned out to be one of the least dark games in the franchise. Kid-friendly and gameplay-based platformers just seem to be the direction where Sonic has been going, and that kind of makes me sad. The reason I got into Sonic games at all was because of the action-packed storytelling, the signature fast-paced style of the gameplay, the out-of-this-world settings, and the well-crafted characters. All four of these things have been torn apart and pushed back out as just child fodder in the past 12 years. The characters I once knew, the stories I saw play out, 
and all the gameplay I had so much fun with are gone. The reason I want to put my opinion on Sonic Frontiers out there is because in the back of my brain, specifically the Sonic section I kept locked off until recently, really does want this game to be great. I want the series to change for the better, but as of right now, I don't see that change anywhere in the future. I hope to see some form of good come for this game within June, with IGN covering almost everything about it, but who knows if I'll even like whatever additions are shown. So I'll keep this quick because it's just an opinion video, but to wrap this up, tie it with a bow, whatever you want to say, I'm trying to keep my optimism. I'm trying to look forward. I'm trying to find a reason to want to like this new Sonic game I've waited five years for, but I haven't found that reason yet. If all else fails, hey, at least us fans have a third movie to look up to. Thanks for hearing me out, and let's hope for something great. Something great for Sonic again.